Welcome to my website at www.defensecouncil.com. My name is Stephen Biss. I'm a lawyer in Mississauga, Ontario. This website is designed to provide basic information about the Youth Criminal Justice Act. This site is connected to my main website at www.lawyers.ca. You can learn a lot about what goes on in youth court proceedings by clicking on the procedure section. This menu gives you details about procedural aspects of young offenders law in Canada, starting with the arrest of a young person and moving to a bail hearing in situations where the police are seeking to hold the person in custody. There's a lot of information at this site about fingerprints and about first appearance in youth court. The first appearance page will give you information about what you need to remember when you first go to court on the first occasion. In particular, you need to be properly dressed. You need to be asking the court for an adjournment when the judge or justice of the peace asks you what you wish to do. You will probably need to give the justice of the, of the peace your date of birth, and the justice of the peace will want to know if parents are present. Under the procedure menu at this website, there's information about the notice to parent and date of birth, and something called a Section 25 order. There is an order that's available in emergency circumstances where the court discovers that the young person is not being represented by counsel independent of the parents and the matter is a serious charge and the court is considering the importance of the young person having a lawyer but the family genuinely cannot afford to provide the lawyer or the lawyer being provided by the parents is not independent of the parents. There's information at this site about retaining a lawyer about the whole concept of what a pretrial is. Often a lawyer acting for you will hold a meeting with the Crown called a resolution meeting. At a resolution meeting the lawyers discuss the issues at the case, they see if there's any possibility of a resolution and they consider what sorts of aspects of disclosure are still missing. Sometimes the court will hold a judicial pretrial. At a judicial pretrial, the lawyers, both Crown and Defense, meet with the Ontario Court Justice and discuss what the issues are and discuss what the length of time will be required for the trial. Also under procedure, you'll see information about setting a trial date, how to prepare for trial in youth court, the concept of notice being given under the Charter of Rights, and a whole lot of information about statements and confessions. It's important that parents and young people note what are the rules in Canada about the giving of statements and confessions. Hopefully the young person has got some legal advice before they went to the police station. Sometimes statements are excluded by the court because they're given under oppressive circumstances. And in addition to that, there are special guarantees of the rights of young persons uh, under the Youth Criminal Justice Act, special rights to make sure that the young person understands that they have the right to have a consultation with a parent, and in addition to that, has an opportunity to consult with a lawyer. There's information at this website about trial procedure under the Youth Criminal Justice Act and something that's absolutely essential to trial and that's what lawyers call disclosure. It's very very important that before you do anything very much in the court system that the Crown Attorney's Office give you disclosure. You don't want to ever do a guilty plea and you don't ever want to complete a case or start a trial unless you've got full disclosure from the Crown of the witness statements 
and any other technical information about the Crown's case, and that that's been thoroughly discussed face-to-face -face with your lawyer. This website has a lot of information about procedural rules under the Youth Criminal Justice Act. The menu item having to do with findings has to do with the significance of a finding of guilt. A court can't punish anybody under a statute unless they've been found guilty. And so it's important to understand the difference between being found not guilty and being found guilty. There are also circumstances in which the court never reaches that point where a charge is withdrawn under the Youth Criminal Justice Act or a charge is stayed by either the Crown Attorney's Office or by a judge under the Youth Criminal Justice Act and it's important to, un oh, important to understand the difference between those things. Sentencing under the Young Offen Youth Criminal Justice Act, we used to call it the Young Offenders Act and previous to that it was the Juvenile Delinquents Act. Sentencing under the Youth Criminal Justice Act is fairly complex because courts want to be concerned about differences among young persons in terms of their degree of responsibility in the crime with their age, whether they've got a prior record, and a whole lot of other factors. Now, I've done a lot of research in the past about sentencing of young persons, and you'll notice a reference in a number of places in my website to something that I call a historical database. And in particular, if you, if you click on this particular link of comparison of age 13 against age 15, you can see information about data with respect to young persons age 13, age 15, and, and see some comparison of the differences in the kinds of sentences that judges have given historically at the Brampton Family Court with respect to 13-year-olds as against 15-year-olds. The offenses that we deal with primarily in youth court are not the offenses that you might think they might be. We deal with lots of assaults, lots of break and enters, lots of fails to comply with disposition, but there are a lot of property offenses as well, such as theft, mischief to property, possession of stolen property, break and enter, and robberies. Theft is probably the offense that concerns the most young persons brought to court I've provided some background information with respect to the offense of theft of what the criminal code provision is. And if you want to move from the page to do with theft or mischief or possession of stolen property or break and enter to a historical sentencing database, you can do that with respect to any of these kinds of offenses by clicking on this link to historical YOA sentencing database. And that's going to take you into a body of information with respect to its data having to do with the Brampton Family Court from a number of years ago, stretched out over about a 10-year period, with a lot of information. What's good about this particular database is it gives you an idea of how frequent that particular offense was in that court during that period of time, and what the sorts of ordinary sentences were. Often the sentences that you read about in the newspapers or in the law books are for the really serious cases. Most of the people who are brought to youth court are there for relatively minor, pretty ordinary kinds of things. And so it's important that parents, if they're doing research, or young persons, if they're doing research about sentencing, that they understand that most of the offenses that we deal with in youth court have to do with things like theft and sometimes with things like break and enter. It's only rarely that we get involved with the most seriously offenses. You're also going to find at this website that there's a blog. And the blog contains a lot of information about issues, current issues that are going on in the court system, and will provide you with a lot of good ideas about what the respective roles are of a parent and a young person and the police when the young person goes to the police station. We've got lots of discussion at the website about what a waiver is and what consulting means and what a statement is. Police often use very sophisticated strategies 
in their interrogation of young persons. And young persons need to be aware of what those interrogation strategies are, and they need to have some strategies of their own of how they are going to resist the temptation to tell all that will be afforded to them in such circumstances. Ultimately, if your son or daughter is charged with a criminal offense or is being invited to come to the police station, then a parent or the young person is going to have to put some serious thought into the question of what's going to happen when the child gets to the police station. And you're going to find a lot of information at this website about what's going to happen when the child gets to the police station and you're going to see information at this site about strategies of what the young person can do in their interaction with the police officer when they're at the police station. But ultimately it may be that the young person needs to speak to a lawyer whether it's a lawyer in private practice like me on the telephone my telephone number is up the top right corner of all the pages on this website the young person could phone me, or alternatively, if I'm not available, they should ask to speak to the 24-hour duty council to get ideas about how they should respond to some of the questions that they're receiving from the police.